Now, I've already introduced the framework of an argument. You have a premise supporting a conclusion. Now I want to talk about an analogous framework, which is that of phenomena hypothesis. This is a super helpful uh, framework. Something like 20, 30% of the stimulus on logical reasoning utilizes this framework. So let me just say how it's analogous. With the argument framework, you got a set of premises which supports a conclusion. So sometimes, depending on what the stimulus is, you can think instead of premise conclusion, you can think of the premise as a phenomenon, which also supports a hypothesis, a story you're telling about the phenomenon. Okay, so I've introduced some new words, and I need to explain a bit about what a phenomenon is. Simply put, a phenomenon is just a thing that happens, right? Some event that happens. It can be very micro scale, it can be very macro scale. In that sense, the word is super flexible, right? So right now in your body, cells are dividing. That's a phenomenon. Right, that's at a fairly small, it's not the smallest scale, but it's a fairly small scale. You can go even smaller than that. You can scale up, zoom up. Right now you're watching this video. That's a phenomenon, right? Somewhere out there, somebody's playing a football game. That's a phenomenon, right? That's even a little bit scaled up. Weather patterns are phenomena, right? The motion of the planets are phenomena. You can go, the spiral motion of our galaxy is a phenomenon, right? So it just, the scale is really flexible. So just think of phenomena as just an event, right? Maybe a hundred bottlenose dolphins wash up on shore dead. That's a phenomenon. Now, some phenomena are just kind of interesting to us. Not all phenomena are interesting. I mean, there is an innumerable, actually an infinite list of phenomena like around you right now that you're just not interested in. For example, your computer isn't spontaneously falling apart. That's a phenomenon, but I bet it never occurred to you to ask why that is, right? You see, so... Really, it's a tiny subset of phenomena that interest us humans. We want an explanation. And that's where the hypothesis comes in. A hypothesis is really just like a first step towards a full explanation. It's just your like, guess, your stab in the dark. At the story, like, let me see if I can tell a story that explains this phenomenon. Oh, 100 bottlenose dolphins washed up on shore dead? That's interesting. I need, I want to explain that. Perhaps it has something to do with uh, sewage, dumping raw sewage into the ocean. Perhaps it has something to do with uh, the algae bloom. Perhaps it's, I don't know, solar winds or something, right? You, you just come up with some story that you tell that attempts to explain the phenomenon. Okay, so in the sense in which it, under our argument framework, we identify premise as supporting the conclusion with a phenomenal hypothesis framework, you identify a set of phenomenon that supports your hypothesis. Okay, it plays by slightly different rules, and I get into that more when we talk about reading comprehension, in particular, the science passages that heavily utilize this, not just in a structural sense in which, you know, logical reasoning does, but in a deeply substantive sense, you have to understand the relationship between phenomena and hypothesis. I'll talk more about that there. But here, let's just turn our attention to it, you know, like an example, right, where I came home from uh, to find the kitchen trash can toppled, its contents spilt while the cat's presence in the kitchen, right, the cat's just sitting in the kitchen, kitchen looking at me, pleased at my displeasure, Right, that might lead me to suspect him as the culprit, it's more likely that the dog did it, since the trash can would have been too heavy for the cat to knock down. So if you think about, let, let's reconceptualize this in a phenomenon hypothesis framework, right, before we talk about the argument framework. Let's list out the phenomenon. I mean, one, the trash can is toppled. We can add more details to this. I can say, like, content spilled. I can say, two, the cat is nearby, right? But I can say three, I have a dog. Apparently I do have a dog. Dog is uh, maybe not nearby, but is present, I can say, right? Four, I can say the trash can, and this is a crucial piece of information, is too heavy for the cat. So taking all of this information together, right? What is my hypothesis? My hypothesis is that the dog knocked over the trash can, right? So all of this is the phenomenon. And this here is my hypothesis, which is just the story that I'm trying to tell to make sense of all of this stuff. Notice in the stimulus, an alternative hypothesis is presented but quickly dismissed, right? What's the alternative hypothesis? That the cat did it, right? But we, we say this while the cat's presence in the kitchen might lead me to suspect if him as the culprit, right? It's like, yeah, you could, you know, this could be your hypothesis that the cat did it. But quickly we say, mm, it's far more likely that the dog did it, right? Since the trash can would have been too heavy for the cat to knock down. So there I've reorganized all the information using this framework of phenomenon hypothesis. Now we can do the same thing again using the framework of premise conclusion. The conclusion is this, 
the conclusion is just that it's more likely that the dog did it, right? I, I sh technically, I should have written, and I apologize about this because <laughs> I just, didn't I just do the lesson on the difference between absolute versus relative, right? I'm pretty sure I did. So it's more likely that the dog knocked over a trash can, not that the dog knocked over the trash can. So you see the conclusion here is analogous to the hypothesis, right? Whereas this is the premise, right? This is the premise. The trash can was too heavy for the cat to knock down. And what else is premise? All this stuff is also premise. All this stuff is part of what supports this conclusion. So you see, the premise is analogous to the phenomenon. The conclusion is analogous to the hypothesis. Okay, so this is just a very, very shallow intro to the idea of phenomenon hypothesis. We're going to encounter this idea more frequently and in more depth later on when we get to weakening questions, strengthening questions. But for now, I just want you to make this connection between this framework and this framework.